Willkommen zum aktuellen Exklusiv-Interview von Gold Invest. Wir sprechen heute mit Simon Lill, uh, das ist der Managing Director von The Grey Mining, einem sehr interessanten Gold Explorer aus Australien, der mit seinem Pilbara Gold Projekt im Herzen des uh, neuesten Goldrauschs in Australien aktiv ist. The Grey hat 2018 einiges auf seinem uh, Projekt bewegt und wir wollen jetzt mal hören, was ist dabei rumgekommen und wie soll es weitergehen. Welcome Simon. Hi Bjorn, how are you going? Simon, as I just told my audience, the Grey has had a very busy year so far. Um, you've been drilling a lot of different prospects on the Pilbara Gold project, uh, looking for structural gold, trying to gorge the potential of the conglomerate gold on the project. Um, to, just to remind us, please give us a, a very short introduction of what the Pilbara project is about. Yes, we're calling ourselves the Pilbara Gold Project. We've got only over 1,500 square kilometres of uh, tenure, about 80 kilometres to the southeast of Port Hedland. So from an infrastructure point of view, really, we couldn't be in a better position. Um, the Gold Project itself, we uh, tout that we have two, over 200 kilometres of shear zone hosted mineralisation, um, which has been very much underexplored. We talk about less than 10% of it uh, having any sort of drill coverage. And even then the drill coverage is for the most part above 100 meters. So we look at this and say, we've got uh, a terribly underexplored shear zone um, gold project. We also have what we describe as the X factor, which is the conglomerate gold. They're out to the west of our project. Uh, we have told the market that we are bulk sampling there at the moment. And we have told the market we expect to provide results before the end of October. Um, that might be a week later, I'm not sure, but uh, we are doing the work there at the moment. Okay. So, as you said, uh, or as I said, we had you did a lot of drilling this year, and um, a large part of this led to a new resource calculation. Um, could you please try, uh, take us through that? What, what did you achieve there? Yes, look, we'll have an annual report being released in the next day or so, and I, I do note that it, within that we say that uh, we've undertaken over 35,000 metres of drilling in the last 12 months. Given where we were 12 months ago in a uh, financial situation, I guess that's, uh, that's an enormous amount of drilling. A lot of that has been to continue to enhance the scoping study that we announced in August of 2017. We were moving a lot of resources from inferred to indicated. We we're also trying to extend scale of the pits and to uh, examine some of the resources along strike as well. Now, we have added 200,000 ounces of resources mm -hmm. since our last resource statement, which was mid, uh, I think, October of 2017. We announced 1.2 million. We're now at just under 1.4 million ounces, uh, but we have increased the categories. We've also uh, identified in that period, uh, Molina had its maiden resource statement. That's one of our resources. Uh, Tauranas had its maiden resource statement. And both of those have grown very, very significantly uh, in the last 12 months as well. And both, we believe, have the potential to continue to grow in scale. So that's also where uh, the last set of drill results came from, which were pretty nice, uh, to, to say it uh, understatedly. Um, can, you, can you give us yeah, tell look, us I'm a bit more about uh, I'm not as technical as when you interview Andy Beckwith, of course, but uh, the hole at uh, Molina that we had 55 meters at 3.1 grams was yeah. probably amongst the best holes we've had in the... Uh, in the system and uh, we've got room around that to follow up, which we plan to do in the next few weeks. Tauarana, uh, I won't say it keeps surprising because I think we, we are identifying what it is, but it uh, keeps providing regular and good results. It's a high grade, narrow veined system, but uh, we're pretty happy with Tauarana. And um, if you look at the diagrams, you'll see that the northeastern section still has a lot of upside for resources and we're very comfortable that it will go deeper as well. Okay, so we talked about two of the areas uh, of, of uh, or the target zones, let's say, uh, on the Pilbara Gold project. Um, what are your plans overall for uh, while looking for structural gold uh, on the project? 
Yes, look, there's, we had a presentation that we uh, released, I guess, three weeks ago now. Within that, for the first time, we have started to talk about our multi-million ounce potential at the project across these structural zones. We have stated a corporate target of plus three million ounces at the uh, Pilbara Gold Project. That's not including what may or may not happen at the uh, conglomerate zones. So we're now comfortable stating that as a target. Um, we're going to be doing two things in the next 12 months. One is uh, we're looking to conclude a pre-feasibility study, which we think we will do so and release in the first quarter of next calendar year. That's, uh, again, concentrating mainly on the open pit uh, resources. Uh, we're also looking to continue to drill to add resources to our project to get a better look at the scale uh, to move towards 2 million ounces and then beyond to 3 million ounces. There was a release uh, two months ago, six weeks ago, whereby uh, our exploration geologist, technical director, Andy Beckwith, has come up with an exploration target, for example, at uh, Withnall Deeps. And he has come up with over two of the loads that we know. We know we've got four loads that we're looking at of 350,000 ounces to 700,000 ounces. That's oh. in our ASX releases. I guess all I can ever say is that I know Andy does tend to err on the conservative side, but uh, for him to come up with an exploration target has been a good step too. So we think there's plenty of room for us to add, add resource ounces. And uh, whilst we will finish the scoping, sorry, not the scoping study, the pre-feasibility study, that is certainly not a precursor for moving straight into a definitive bankable feasibility study. We think we'll continue to look at the scale for another 12 months to two years. Okay. Well, it certainly sounds exciting. Um, and on top of that, you've got what you call the X factor. factor. Um, so uh, you recently announced that you, as you said, commenced bulk sampling at uh, Loudon's patch, it was, I think, where you concentrated first. Um, why box samples and what are you trying to achieve there? Look, we have, uh, I shouldn't call them competitors, we have peers in the sector. Uh, Novo is obviously the, the company leading the charge and uh, they're doing uh, a lot of analysis on their ground and looking at uh, very, very substantial bulk samples. We, in the first instance, are just trying to prove that the conglomerates are carrying mineralisation, carrying gold mineralisation. And uh, our plan at Loudon's Patch has been to take a number of 200 to 250 kilogram bulk samples. We're then going to be crushing and grinding, milling those and uh, running them across a Nelson concentrator. And at the end of the day, all we watch, wish to do is show that, yes, we've got some nuggets, yes, we've got some colour, uh, and from that 200 kilogram sample, there's the colour that we got and it might weigh 0.5 of a gram, it might weigh 3 grams. That's all we're saying. We're not saying that that's a grade across the resource. People can probably do their own calculations over five or six samples. Um, so that, that's really the start. Once we've done that and once we're comfortable that, yes, this is carrying gold and the gold is of a mineral of a grade, uh, of enough interest, yes, we'll go into more detailed assay work. I think uh, we have done some diamond drilling at our two other conglomerate zones, Jarrett Well and Steelwell. We've certainly uncovered significant uh, conglomerate zones there. I think it was 70 metres and about 50 metres, including uh, perutic areas, which seems to be a control on some of the Novo ground. Doesn't mean it will be with us. So we will go back uh, there and we'll probably do some drilling at uh, Loudon's Patch as well to get a better feel for the extent of the conglomerate zone. Is it all under the hill at Loudon's Patch or does it, con it, does it continue into the ground around the area? Okay. So um, let's take a step back. You said you'll be running through a facility that I think is on site there, a mini sort of facility. Can you explain that a bit? Uh, look, it's uh, it's actually at our camp and uh, it can handle 250 kilograms uh, over maybe a three or four hour period. And it's really just a sluice where it's uh, the gold, the, the non-gold is getting washed away. The gold's been retained and uh, uh, it's, you know, it's a fairly standard prospector type piece of equipment. You never use it com commercially. Well, I wouldn't think you would. Maybe if you're rich enough, you would uh, in terms of your, your vein. 
Um, but it will, it will adequately show what uh, what we need it to show in the first instance. Okay, how, so how long do you think you will have uh, till you have these the first uh, preliminary results? So to, to have well, a look. We were, look, we were prepared to say that we expected to provide results before the end of October. And our geologist on site, we've, uh, we've asked him to try and make sure we do. But having said that, uh, Murphy's law would probably say it'll be you know seven to ten days after that. But uh, look, it's pending. I guess it's oh. pending. Okay, so seven to ten days is nothing in mining where you have yeah, always um, a lot of can have a lot of delay oh, easily. Well, it's, look, it's taken us it's taken us a while to get to this stage, and what people don't always see is that. Uh, there's always sort of heritage issues and then there's station issues, people mustering, and then there's equipment issues. So it never runs quite as smoothly as you'd like it to. Sure, that's sure. So let's sum it up. Where will the grade be, let's say, by the end of this year and six months after that? Uh, look, by the end of this year, we, we certainly have more drilling planned. We have a rig on site at the moment and we're commencing some diamond drilling as well. So there'll be a, there'll be quite a bit of drilling between now and Christmas. Results will come through January to March, which is sort of, the, it's a bit seasonal. That's the wet season over there. So we should have good news for January through March. Um, and obviously the conglomerate sampling and we will, if subject to what those samples look like, we'll continue to do work on the conglomerates as well and continue to report on those. Uh, first quarter next year, yes, we should be able to report on a pre-feasibility study result that will also convert a certain level of resources to reserves. Beyond that, uh, this time next year or perhaps Christmas 2019, I guess I'd be hopeful that we're pushing two million ounces and uh, showing that we've got more behind that as well. Uh, part of our program before between now and Christmas will be an air core program. We keep talking about a series of exploration targets that have never had drill holes. We're starting to test some of those as well. And uh, we would hope that we'll get a, uh, a catalog of further targets to start uh, uh, drilling and hopefully start looking at maiden resources on as well. So. Okay, it certainly sounds like you still have a busy year, 2018 and 2019 at least, before you. Uh, we'll be pleased to see how it goes and uh, come back for further further updates. Thank you. Well, we haven't we haven't spoken to you for a while, Bjorn, and that's been a bit remiss. So we'll keep you up to date in the next few months. So thanks for your time. Okay, thank you very much.